This is the video of experiment number three, synthesis of salicylic acid from wintergreen oil. Here is a wide angle view of the experimental apparatus used for reflux on the micro scale. We have a hot plate. We have here a heating block, which is some thermal mass that is matched to my vial. So here's my reaction vessel. On top of my reaction vessel, I have connected a water-cooled condenser. It is two glass tubes, an outer tube where water is flowing through, and an inner tube which is open to the atmosphere. We have water coming in from the water spigot to the lower connection of my water jacket and I have my upper connection going to the drain. And I'm now going to show the water draining. Notice I just have a slow trickle of water going through there. The idea behind this system is that I heat up this vessel to a point where it's boiling. As my liquid turns into a vapor it starts to move up the column it hits the cold water and then condenses back down into my reaction vessel this has two purposes one is to maintain a constant volume of my solvent the liquid in my reaction vessel and also it's to maintain a constant temperature because my solvent which is going to be aqueous in this case will boil at about a hundred degrees celsius and stay there I'm now going to zoom in a little bit to get a closer look at the reaction apparatus. My hot plate is just out of the picture. My heating block. I have my reaction vessel. And I have my water jacketed condenser. And my input water and my output water. The reason we have the water going in the bottom is because we want to make the coldest water near the reaction vessel because as the water moves up it's going to get heated by my vapors and then it'll go to the drain. I'm now going to remove my reaction vessel and load in my reactant. So I'm going to put in this reaction vessel, I'm going to put in some methyl salicylate, some sodium hydroxide, and a small boiling chip. This is just an image of the commercial methyl salicylate that we are going to use. So first I teared my reaction vessel and then I added methyl salicylate. I added 0 0.3131 grams. After adding my boiling chip and my methyl salicylate, I'm now going to add 2.5 milliliters of 6 molar sodium hydroxide to my reaction vessel. I'm then going to attach it to my reflux condenser and lower it down into my heating block, making sure there's a tight fit down against the bottom so I get good thermal transfer. Now I'm going to turn on the hot plate. I'm going to turn the hot plate setting up to approximately 300 degrees. see that value down there it's blinking 300. The reason I set it at 300 degrees is that there's thermal loss between the hot plate and the thermal mass here and then there's thermal loss again so I need to get up to about 300 degrees to get the aqueous sodium hydroxide up to 100 degrees C so that it will start to boil. 
it's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes for that hot plate to get up to temperature. So I'm going to pause the video for a short while and then turn it back on when we're ready to reflux. A close-up view of the reaction vessel shows a white solid. This white solid appeared just as I added the sodium hydroxide. So, our methyl salicylate is insoluble in sodium hydroxide, which is aqueous. I can just start to see some vapors forming at the top of the reaction vessel here. So we're getting closer to actually boiling and being under reflux. You can observe that the solid is starting to disappear as my water becomes hotter and hotter. That's because the methyl salicylate is more soluble in hot water and some of it is being converted to salicylic acid. And as we continue to heat, more and more of that methyl salicylate is dissolved into solution. I now consider that a vigorous boil. We're now going to continue to boil it or reflux it for 30 minutes. So I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes. And then we'll come back after 30 minutes and uh, stop the reflux. You can see in this picture that we have water vapors. Maybe it's a little hard to see. There are water vapors going up to right about here and then recondensing back down into the reaction vessel. You can see the boiling chips bouncing around as it is refluxing. still refluxing. Our reaction has now been refluxing for 30 minutes. I'm now going to raise my reaction vessel off the heating block and let it cool to room temperature. And turn off my heat on my hot plate.
I'm now going to pour the contents of my reaction vessel into a 50 milliliter beaker. I'm also going to use a little bit of DI water to rinse that out. Okay. And I'm going to pull off my boiling chips using this forceps here. Rinsing that one off. that one off and I have one more to get out of there. Rinsing that one off. Now I'm going to acidify my solution using some sulfuric acid. I'm now going to acidify my reaction using some sulfuric acid. I'm going to first go in and take up about two milliliters of sulfuric acid. And then I'm going to add it dropwise here. Now I'm going to go in and test the pH. You can see it's still very basic, so I still need to add more sulfuric acid. Test the pH again. It's still basic. Test the pH again. And I'm getting closer and closer to approximately a pH of around 5. I still need some more acid to add. I'm going to add a little bit more to my beaker. Stir my contents of my beaker up again. Test for pH. I still need more acid. I'm still around 4 or 5 pH. Test my solution again. I need more sulfuric acid.
We're getting down there in their pH around three. I'm going to add some more sulfuric acid. stir up the contents of my beaker to get my acid all mixed in and react with the sodium hydroxide and test my pH again I'm definitely down there probably near three or four now I'm going to add a little bit more sulfuric acid up my reaction contents again test my pH I still need to add more acid And I'm going to call that good. I'm down near pH 2 now. I'm now going to chill my reaction vessel to help precipitate out more material. And we'll leave it in the ice bath for approximately five minutes. So as I was adding acid, every time I added acid, I could see a little bit more white precipitate form. And finally, once we got down to pH round two, I could see a lot of solid white material up here. I'm now going to take my beaker over to the vacuum filtration apparatus and separate out the solid salicylic acid from the liquid. I'm going to take a piece of filter paper put it inside my Buchner funnel I'm going to turn on the vacuum. Then I'm going to take a little bit of ice water just again seal my filter paper against the bottom of my Buchner funnel. And then I'm going to transfer the contents of my beaker, my salicylic acid, over to my Buchner funnel. I'm going to rinse out my beaker with a little bit of water. That will be ice water and pour it down through there. I'm also going to now wash my salicylic acid with just a little bit more chilled DI water to rinse any ions out of it. And then I'm going to leave it on the vacuum for approximately five minutes to help dry it. We're not going to isolate our salicylic acid right now. We're going to actually skip the weighing steps and drying steps and we're going to go on to recrystallize it to purify it and then isolate it and dry it to constant mass. So we'll just leave it here for approximately five minutes to dr help dry it. I 
I scrape the solid salicylic acid out of my Buchner funnel and put it into a beaker, and I'm now going to recrystallize it in boiling water. I've calculated the minimum amount of water required to recrystallize the salicylic acid that we've isolated. And I've calculated that I need approximately 4.2 milliliters of boiling water. That's based on the theoretical yield and the solubility of salicylic acid in boiling water. I'm now going to add my 4.5 milliliters of boiling water. And then I'm going to put that on the hot plate and stir it around. It looks like I'm going to need some more. So I'm going to add approximately two more milliliters. and stir it around. And it looks like the malt is all. I'm now going to set that on the countertop to cool slowly and let it recrystallize. You can already sort of see crystals starting to form. The beaker has been sitting there for about 10 minutes now and it's cooled to approximately room temperature. I'm now going to place it in an ice bath to further precipitate out salicylic acid and let it stand for about 5 minutes. We've had our beaker now in the ice bath for approximately five minutes. We're now going to do vacuum filtration again. I'm going to take a piece of filter paper, put it in my Buchner funnel, as we've done several times before. I'm going to turn on the vacuum. I'm going to pour a little ice water on top of that filter paper to seal it against the bottom surface. I'm then going to take my salicylic acid that's been recrystallized. I'm going to stir it up a little bit and pour it down on top of there. And then I'm going to take some of my ice water and rinse out my beaker several times. And then we're going to let that sit for about uh, five more minutes with the vacuum pulling on it. Scrape it off the filter paper. I'm pre-weighing my watch class now. It's been about five minutes. I'm going to turn off the vacuum, remove my Buchner funnel from my sidearm flask, and scrape my salicylic acid onto my watch glass. These crystals appear almost needle-like. Uh. 
I weigh my crystals on the balance. Put them in the oven to dry, and then I will reweigh them after five or ten minutes and keep on doing that cycle till they're dry. After 20 minutes, I have a mass of 43.3056. I have prepared two samples for melting point determination. I've taken our synthesized salicylic acid, put a small amount on a small watch glass and ground it up using my stirring rod. I've then put a small amount into a capillary tube. I've also taken some commercial salicylic acid mixed it with some of my synthesized salicylic acid, ground it up, and put it in a capillary tube also. So now I'm going to take both these samples over to the melting point apparatus and we're going to determine the melting point range for both of those. I have placed the two melting point tubes into the melt temp apparatus. On the left hand side is the synthesized salicylic acid. In the center is the synthesized mixed with some commercial salicylic acid. And the tube to the far right is just empty. I'm now going to start heating up our samples and I will call off the temperatures. I'm starting at 140 degrees and ramping up at a rate of 10 degrees per minute. 141 degrees. 142 degrees. 143 degrees. 144 degrees. 145 degrees. 146 degrees. 147 degrees. 148 degrees. 149 degrees. 150 degrees. I still do not see anything. 151 degrees. 152 degrees. 153 degrees. 154 degrees. 155 degrees. 156 degrees. 157 degrees. I start to see movement. 158 degrees. 159 degrees. Some more movement. 160 degrees. 161 degrees. 162 degrees, 163 degrees, 164 degrees, 165 degrees, 166 degrees, and now they're all totally melted. 167 degrees, 168 degrees, 
769 degrees and 170 degrees and now I'm gonna stop the process Here's the final notebook pages for this experiment, and that's the end.